Pollock, so unbreakable, aren't they? G'day guys, Ronnie Dahl here, Four Wheeling Australia. Welcome back to Project Luxie. This is episode nine. There's only a few more to go because we're nearly done. And the way bridge is coming. People keep asking, it is coming. Not in this episode though. In this episode, we're going to talk about the Rhino Hive, the armor lock system, which protects my paint. And we're going to talk about the seat covers and I'll throw in my recovery gear so you can see what I'm carrying in this vehicle right in here, right now. Let's get to it. Ladies and gents, this is the menu of today's episode. Now part of it is filmed during lockdown. So here it is, you can skip to any point you like to down below. Let's get to it. The Rhino Hide. This is the new armor lock system. And what I just demonstrated is exactly what it's there for. It's to prevent your vehicle from being scratched. So what is different from this than the previous version that I had on the Land Cruiser? Or is this the same version? It's not. Previously, Rhino Hide was magnetic. So you could only mount it to steel vehicles. You couldn't mount it on aluminum or aluminum vehicles. This new armor lock system is, well, fitted with these armor locks. A lot of people think they're drilled into the vehicle. They're not. There is an air gap in between it. That air gap will protect the panel and then it'll absorb it across the panel instead of putting dents into your doors or your paintwork or scratches. Let's talk about the test phase that I've done with the Rhino Hide armor lock system. That's what I love about it. Now you're not gonna walk around and whack your car with a stick by hand, but you're gonna drive around and you're gonna scratch the absolute crap out of your car and you're gonna whack it with sticks out in a bush. This is the beta set. This is the first set ever made for a Hilux. I was super keen to get it on because I've had the Mark I version, which was a magnetic version. This is not magnetic, this is not bolted to the vehicle. We'll get to the details later, but I wanna talk about my test phase first. We put this through a pretty good test. Uh, passing trucks at high speed, uh, went through a lot of water crossings. Water crossings was my biggest fear, but they've never come off. This system here definitely doesn't come off. I had water over the roof at one stage. Driving at high speed, yeah, we did a good test there. This is rated to, on a test track, it's been tested up to 130 kilometers per hour. So it is road rated. Now, when I was up north, there was a stretch of road, but there was no one else around. So in the interest of public safety, I gave this a bit of a, bit of a test. What's that? $1.47 for fuel. Number one, I can park it anywhere. Don't have to worry about people opening doors into my vehicle, although the sidestep does help me a little bit because I'm lifted. But other four wheel drives. I don't have to worry about it anymore. It looks tough as hell, and it is tough as hell. It gives me this Mad Max armor plated kind of look. It kind of looks like, like a vehicle you put like a security team in. It looks, like, it looks bulletproof. It looks like you can shoot at it. Stay tuned. Should we shoot at it? Best thing about this new system is I can leave it on. I don't actually have to take it off. The old product with the magnets, you gotta wash it on the other side so you don't get any magnet contact or stuff in between. There was more maintenance with the other one. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. This one here, I can just leave it on. Don't have to worry about it. Yes, I, I check every now and then if there's chunks of mud in between, but that's all you really gotta do. So you can leave it on. No one can flog it either because you get a special key and we'll get to how that works. You get a key and that's how you unlock them. That's why it's called armor lock, like that. So the mounting surface or the mounting point behind it is actually 3M taped with uh, just some ridiculously high temperature resistant uh, tape. I think it's 
I don't know, it's on your screen because I can't quite remember it. When you're up north, it might say 45 degrees, 48 degrees up in the Pilbara in wet season, but that's the shade temperature. So imagine how hot your car is. You can literally fry an egg on your car up there. <laughs> anyway, that's how it's mounted. Now these mounting tabs, unlike the magnet version, the magnet version, you just pull it off and on like that. This one here, you have to unlock it. This whole panel, has a pull force of 228 kilos. That's because there are 12 of these and each of these armor locks have a pull force of 19 kilos, like a straight pull force. So these panels are not coming off unless you remove them. So there is a knack to getting these off and that is you leave the last tab as the top tab to take off. And there we go. That's how you get them off. And that's what the paint looks like underneath. And that's what the panel looks like on the back. These mounting points here, because they're 3M taped and they're not magnetic, they can actually go on aluminium vehicles, steel, plastic, glass. And getting it back on, there we go. And you can see it's just gonna hold there and then we just do them all up again. It's a set you leave on your vehicle because if you had to do this every day, it'd be a pain in the ass. But you leave it on your vehicle, that's the whole point. At the end of this video, for those who are interested in a Rhino hide, there is a bit of a deal that I've scrounged up for you guys. So stay tuned if you're interested in that. For now, let's move on to the next thing. My tailgate. The trip I just came back from in the Pilbara, I was towing for 6,500 Ks a lot of that on gravel roads and high speed. So every time I went on a gravel road at high speed, the rocks were bouncing off the tire, being flicked off the tire, hit the trailer, bounced off the trailer, and went straight back in here. So all these little chips you can see, there are chips everywhere. Most of them are down to the primer, thankfully, but some are actually down to the bare metal. So I have been talking to Rhino Hyde and I'm hoping that they will make a panel for the rear of uh, tailgates, but we'll see. The other option was to line X the whole back, but that's kind of permanent. So I'll, uh, yeah, I'll see what I can do. I'll try and work with Rhino Hyde and see if we can get a panel made for the back. Just like they've done for the 200 series for the back window because <laughs> there's a lot of 200 series owners that have had a back window blow out from a rock flicking from the tire off the trailer back into the window and I actually heard some rocks hit my window as well on a previous trip but because I had the swags there it wasn't that often. The seat covers something I'm very glad I got on just before I left for the Pilbara. On the footwell we can see all that red dirt and dust is still it doesn't matter how often you clean your vehicle after a trip up north, especially to the Pilbara or the Kimberley, there's going to be red dirt everywhere. So having these seat covers would have saved the seats. These are the four elements, the black duck, four elements. They do get quite hot because they are black. Perhaps I should have gone a different color. I do have the canvas ones in the cruiser and they're gray. They're actually completely red now because of the red dirt. So it shows you how much you actually protect your seats. Those I'll need to wash. But as far as the black ones in here, I don't need to wash these. You can't really see the red dust, but there will be a lot of red dust inside them. You get the whole kit for the back seat as well. You do get a cover for the armrest, the leather armrest, but I prefer the leather trim. I think it looks nice. If it starts getting a bit worn, then I'll put that canvas or that four elements on top of this as well. I nearly forgot, oops, nearly squashed that envelope. All these little crash pods, or little stash aways, I forgot what they're called. Velcro on the back, down here. It's got medication and the satellite phone as well. Full comprehensive recovery kit. Now this is the bee's knees, the kit. I don't need anything else but it takes up a lot of room. So apart from the winch you've already seen and the max tracks on the roof, this is my total kit 
that goes with everything else that I use. Starting with an ARB tree strap, tree trunk protector, which can also be used as a bridle, but it's mainly just there for tree trunks. Two winch blankets. Now you can probably get away with one depending on how you set up your whole system. These are the ones that I designed with pockets on the outside. They can hold four times as much sand as your normal blanket and they actually work. We tested these. These will actually save someone's life and save uh, from you know, mass injury to vehicles. There's a whole video on it. You can go check it out. Yes. Yes. It went low and past the tree. And that was traveling at the height that it would have gone straight under. Wicked. Bit of a plug there for myself. By the way, I've done a bit of a deal with Rhino Hide. At the end of this video, you can see how you can get your hands on one of these. Otherwise, they're available on our website. Moving on to the full comprehensive Max Trax kit. Yes, Max Trax. They actually do recovery kits as well, apart from Max Trax. This bag is their bag as well. It's very useful as a camera bag, by the way. <laughs> but this is the kit bag. You sort of make your own kit, and this is the kit that I've made. First of all, we have a 10 meter kinetic rope with a shackle already attached, so we're ready to go. Now, additional to that, we have a five meter kinetic rope, which means that I can make this into a 15 meter. I wouldn't recommend using a five meter on its own. I have tried that. It's not enough uh, space and not enough give to really use this just as a five meter. These are meant for extensions, so you can extend your whole kit. They do two meter, three meter, all kinds of sizes. But I'll put this here, and I'll tell you about the other sizes later. Then we have a static rope, so this is not kinetic. This is mainly used as a bridle or an extension. If I use it as an extension, I now have 18 meters, which is great because in some situations you can get further away from, say, where the water line is, say someone's bogged on a beach, 18 meters gets you further away. Or in a scenario where you need like a shorter distance and just a small tug, you could combine the five with the three and then you've got eight meters. Moving on to all the accessories that we need for our recovery. I have a winch, so therefore I have a winch ring. Much lighter and much smaller and compact than those big snatch blocks. It already has a shackle on it, so we're ready to go. You'll note that's the common theme here. In the big pocket on the front, I have all my extra soft shackles. These are the core shackles, 14,000 pounds, compared to the fuse shackle. Half the strength of these ones. So why would you have a fuse shackle? Stay with me on this one and I'll show you. Since then, I've chopped half my hair off and here we are. A core shackle and a fuse shackle. When would you use it? The only circumstance I would actually use a fuse shackle in is if a vehicle is so bogged that we are concerned that something is going to break. If that is the issue and we can't do anything about it because it might be mud, you just can't dig it out, then we will install the fuse shackle at this end. So the Hilux will have the fuse shackle because it's stuck. The 79 is there ready to go. It will have the core shackle. The reason why we decided to put the weak link at this end is so that if it does fail, we want it to fail here, not over here. If it fails here, this strap is going to recoil back and it's going to hit the back of the vehicle here or here. The tire is protecting the rear, rear window, so nothing's going to come through the glass and hurt or kill anyone or it might just hit the tray. If it was the other way around and it broke here, then there is potential that this can go through the glass and injure or potentially kill the actual driver of the vehicle that's being recovered. And you want it to always break at the least dangerous end, if you know what I mean. So if it breaks here, we're safe. If it breaks here, we're not safe. That's when I'd use a fuse shackle. In most recoveries, you wouldn't even need to use a fuse shackle though, because as long as you dig it out and you know it's going to be a nice, gentle, easy recovery, there's nothing to worry about, just use your normal gear. But if you're as concerned, that's where this comes into play. Bloody good idea, I reckon. You would have noticed a common theme here, and that is everything being soft. 
there's no hard shackles. I do carry one hard shackle. This is for those situations where I come across someone who doesn't have a recovery point that can accommodate for my soft shackles. It'll be a rare occasion because these soft shackles can, you, can be used in most situations, but for those odd occasions, I do have a normal bow shackle. It's time to weigh in for episode nine. We have 15 kilos for the Rhino hide, which isn't too bad considering it's all around the vehicle. And we have six kilos for the seat covers. Now, why am I counting seat covers? Well, to me, it's a permanent fixture. That said, however, the Max Trax recovery gear is not a permanent fixture. It is a recovery bag that comes with me on a trip and is part of cargo. Cargo will be a different topic for another day. One more episode to go, and then we got the Wave Ridge. But before we go, Remember how I said earlier you could get one of these for free? Well, here's the deal. As you know, I only work with brands and businesses that I like and trust and I actually use their product. With this Rhino Hide, the arm lock system, my feedback and my experience with it has been part of the development. So it's not my design, but I've been part of the development team to make this product what it is today. So for that reason, I've teamed up with Rhino Hide and for every set that's sold, through using my link and using my name, this is what you get with the set, if you buy a set. Also, you get 10% off on any merch on our merch store. So that's the deal I've got with Rhino Hide. So what's the benefit for me? Because I like to be transparent in these situations. Well, the benefit for me is I get a cut for every time a Rhino Hide sold using that link. And you guys will get one of these every time you use that link, which goes to help the channel out. So that is basically this deal in a nutshell. So for those who are not looking at Rhino Hide because it's not available for the vehicle or they just don't want it, you can still get these on our website. But there is a limited quantity available. They went pretty fast last time. In part 10 of Project Luxy, we're gonna talk about fuel capacity, fuel protection, engine protection, and a couple of other vital things. Stay tuned for that. And if you had to guess the final weight, of the vehicle, what would it be? Comment down below. See you next time, and thanks for watching.